Let's just focus our hearts on the Lord this morning as we just begin to enter into praise and worship. Search my heart, search my soul. There's nothing else I want more. Shine your light, show your face. Oh, in my life. give the Lord a praise offering this morning. That song is straight out of scripture, by the way. When the Pharisees came to Jesus and they said, hey, uh, Jesus, what's the greatest commandment? And they were trying to trip him up. And he said, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, love your neighbor as yourself. There's no commandment greater than these. You know, he treats it as one and the same, loving the Lord and loving people. And we're going to look at that this morning on how we take the most simple command and we live it out in our life day in and day out. It's the very basis for our Christian experience is loving God and loving people. And so today, I just want to challenge you. I want to invite you. I want to say, let's go deeper in our love relationship with Jesus. Because yesterday's love relationship with him is not today's. Yesterday's capacity could be puny compared to today's if we allow him. Lord, just open us up. Let us go deeper. If your toe's in the water, get your foot in the water. If you're up to your knees, ah, go up to your waist. Or just dive in. If you feel like you're in over your head, guess what? He puts those little floaty things on you and he says, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to boil you up with his grace. You're not going to drown. It's fun. Experience it. Go for it. Father, today, let us just fall madly in love with you again. Let us remember why you put us here on the earth, and that is to, to love you with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, and then to love the people that are around us. God, we want to do it better, and we want to just enjoy the grace of that love relationship today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Spirit, oh, we come and gather together. Lift up your name. Call on your Savior. Sing that again in the name of the Father. In the name of the Father.
Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, we come to worship. We come to give you our hearts and praise and adoration. Lord, we come as we are this morning. Oh, let's just worship him. Let's sing, come. Come. offer yourself to him. We come to worship. We come to sing to you. Lord, we come as we are. Battered and broken, you make us whole. We come as we are. just come to you. I lay me down. 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 I lay 
again a pleasing sacrifice. Let's lift him up. I lift you up. lay me down as we lay our lives down before him today. Let's lift our voice. We exalt thee.
Let's just sing that together. I exalt thee because the we is actually a collection of eyes. And so when we exalt the Lord, it's actually I exalt the Lord, Phil exalts the Lord, Peggy exalts the Lord, Bruce exalts the Lord, Dana, Sherry, Brian, every one of us here. And, and let's, let's bring that to a crescendo today. Bring that to a crescendo. It's not looking to the next person to exalt the Lord. It's me giving everything and going to that next level, going a little bit higher, going a little bit deeper and bringing that. And then corporately we experience something that is supernatural because the glory of God inhabits the praises of his people. Why exalt thee, O Lord? Let's sing it. I exalt thee. Jesus said, when I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And in that context, he was saying, when I'm lifted up on the cross, people are going to see more than an icon. They're going to see the best representation of love they ever could have imagined. You know, one of the things about us as Christians is that as we exalt the Lord in our life, in a different way. We're not putting him on the cross again. But when we, when we say, you know what, a little bit more of me needs to die and Jesus needs to be exalted. Some of the things that I say need to be demoted and Jesus needs to be promoted. Some of the attitudes that I have need to be put asunder and Jesus needs to be elevated. Okay? We all, we all experience this. Every one of us is at a place where Jesus needs to be exalted. He needs to be reprioritized. He needs to be pushed ahead in our, in our hierarchy of things and the way we think and act and do, okay? So I, 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 just, I just want us to take this time. Let's create an altar before the Lord today and say, God, where are those areas where I need to reprioritize and exalt you? Some of us just need to let some stuff go. Some of us have come off the best week in our life and we're saying, man, it's all about me. And Jesus says, no, the reason that you experienced what you did was because it's all about me. You need to re-exalt him. You need to reevaluate. You need to, are you with me? I want to just say, I want to invite you to come to the altar. I want you to run to the altar, to the aisle, to wherever it is. And we are going to choose today to impact what we are singing about. Lord, I exalt you. I exalt you. If it's a burden that needs to be rolled off, roll it off. If it's something where you need to say, I need more of the Holy Spirit, I want you to run today to the place where you can receive that reprioritization re today. Today is the day. Today is the day. It's not out of condemnation that we come. It's out of love that we come today. Because he says, I want to be exalted in your life. Be glorified, Father.
encourage you just to linger in this place where you are and I want to pray a prayer of consecration you know we are we are joining over a million almost a million and a half people today that have committed to pray for our nation the call to fall to fall on our knees and cry out according to 2nd Chronicles 7 14 to say if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. The Lord will come and heal their land. One of the things that we have to remember is it's individuals, it's not a nation. It's individuals, that is you and me. Today, Lord, we are coming to, to you. We are coming to your table. We are exalting you over our fears. We are exalting you today over our selfishness. We are exalting you today over the attitudes of negativity that we have had. We are exalting you today over unforgiveness. We are exalting you today over bitterness. We are exalting you today over the family issues that we face. We're exalting you today over the economy we are exalting you today over poor leadership. We are exalting you today over pride. We are exalting you today that you might be the God, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the one who was and is and is to come. And we acknowledge you today as the exalted one. Would you shout and cheer and say, we exalt you and acknowledge you as the exalted one today. Great are you, Lord, greatly to be praised. Great are you, Lord, 
greatly to be praised, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Heaven and earth are filled with His glory, filled with His glory, filled with His presence. As we are filled with His presence, we then become the ministers to those that have not experienced His presence yet. Well, if you're seated, I want you to stand up. And, and uh, as you have been filled and are continuing to be filled, I want it to just overflow, overflow to those around you. Begin to just bless those. You know, one of the great things about uh, the, our relationship with the Lord is that even when we don't know what to say to someone, we can always bless them. That's the overflow. Just begin to bless one another. Begin to encourage one another this morning. <laughs> 